All right, it's Murph 2018. First of all, thank you to MetaHackers and Ultimaker for making this trip possible. But for this video, we're here with Scott and your, what are you calling this? Glitter printer, I guess? So it's, I call it a ReCorp. It's basically a, an old ZCorp Z printer, um, Z402. So I just took it, it used to be an old inkjet head. So you take an inkjet head, jet it on gypsum powder. Um, I just replaced all the gypsum with um, glitter, like just 50 pounds of glitter, and then put a laser head on it instead of an inkjet head. Yeah. So yeah, th this isn't the, the original binder process anywhere. So you fully converted this machine. This is the original Z Corp machine, right? How, how does one get one's hands on this relic? <laughs> so my old college used to have this in their old lab, and uh, they ended up needing more space, so it went off to um, auction. So I ended up buying it at auction for you know about $300. And uh, after that, all the binary lines were frozen. It was actually built in 1997, so it's a really old machine. Um, I ended up just taking all the old parts off, and all the mechanics are all the same, but I just replaced all the binder lines with you know, a laser. So using all the original mechanics, still using the, the rollers and uh, feeders and stuff that's in here, um, how has the, the laser process worked out for you? Like, What are your parts like? So the parts are pretty fragile at this point. You end up with these, um, kind of behaves like loose charcoal. Um, it stays together well enough to make bits and pieces. You're, you're casting those in resin once they're yes, done. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're pretty fragile, so I'm casting them into resin so they kind of stay together. So it's kind of worked out pretty well. The biggest challenge I've run into is that it is PET. So glitter is made of PET with a bit of aluminum on top and then some polyester on top of that. So when I laser it together, it does warp up a little bit because it doesn't have any bed adhesion at all. So the well, there is no bed, right? Yeah, because there is no bed. It's not attached to the bed at all. Yeah. So the problem is it warps up a little bit, and if it warps up just a small amount, then this roller will hit it on the reco uh, the recoat, and then it will just push it out of the way, and you end up with this weird warp on it. So I gotta ask, you've got a two and a half foot laser on here. Is this safe? I mean, you have a clear acrylic enclosure on it, uh, and this is like aluminum coated reflective stuff. Uh, should we be wearing those? Uh, probably. I'm just not looking at it right now, and that's why it's kind of like welding. Just don't look at it; you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, don't don't use your your uh, remaining eye. Uh, yeah. So I assume this isn't using any of the original electronics or motors. Motors, I, I think you kept the same, right? Uh, yes, actually, the X and Y and Z motors are all the same. There's actually two Z axes: one that leads um, gives feed powder to it, and one that's actually the build platform that goes down. Those are both standard stepper motors, and I've just used those. Um, the X and Y axes are kind of a challenge because they're not steppers. They're actually DC servo motors, so they have incremental encoders on them. So let's let's actually have a look at those. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, all right. So this is pretty empty. I mean, I, I see some standard rep rep stuff that looks like a ramps, but there's like this tower of awesomeness on it. What's going on here? So this is actually the motor up here, and it's like I said, it's a DC servo motor. As for this, it's a ramps board, a standard rep rep Arduino Mega Pololeo shield. Um, but what I did, this weird stack on top of it, is a custom board I put together that uses two Arduino Pro Micros, made by SparkFun. And I use that to read in the step direction and enable pins on the, the motor carriages, and then it turns that into PWM and direction for a DC motor. So you've got a full PID loop running on this? Yep, so it's full closed loop. I've lost power on this machine before. I just plugged it back in and it just continues where it was. Awesome. Uh, so. It's kind of, it's not entirely as stable as I'd like it to be. You can hear it kind of vibrate uh, because it is kind of bouncing back and forth, but it does work fairly well. So I, I find that really interesting that you have those servo driver boards that are fully custom made. Um, and I guess they're not just specific to this machine. You could use them for something else. They're, I assume they're open source since we're at Murph, right? Uh, yes, they are open source. Um, it's called the Ramps SB. It's actually all written up on uh, the RepRap wiki. So Awesome. That, that thing still exists. Yeah, it does. It's up there. Um, some other strange stuff here. There's this guy here, which is basically just a breakout board. Um, it reads in the step direction and enable pins and turns that into whether or not the laser should fire. So it actually is using, it assumes it's a filament printer. So it thinks in every aspect it's a filament based printer. Uh, there's some custom G code running the recoder, but that's basically reading the extruder stepper. And if the extruder would be extruding, it turns the laser on. That is an awesome solution. So software-wise, I assume you could use it with any standard slicer, right? If you use 100% info? I'm actually using uh, Simplify 3D for it right now. It's running Repetier as the firmware, and it just takes in the standard uh, Simplify 3D G-code. 
And I guess you have some some uh, special layer change G code to to run the the roller and stuff. Uh, yeah. So the actual layer change G code is it once it finishes lasering a layer, it goes back, drops the build platform down about 0.4 millimeters, it raises the uh, feed axis up about 0.6, turns on a roller, which is this guy here, yep. just a little motor that counter rotates to the direction it's rolling, and then pushes more powder over that, and then lasers the next layer. Awesome. So where can people find more info on this process if they happen to have a, a 402 as well and want to do the same thing to it? Uh, so I'm writing up a doc, um, kind of a build log of this on my website, um, scottziv.com, S-C-O-T-T, -T, uh, Z as in zebra, I as in indigo. Yeah. We'll put the URL like right here. Okay, that works. Yeah. Something works. So I'm going to just better put the, the whole build log of how I went about getting this machine, how I kind of went through the challenges that I had building it, and uh, put it up there. So. What an amazing process. All right. So thanks again to MetaHex and Ultimaker for making it possible to sh for me to show you this <laughs> awesomeness that we've got going on here. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos from Murph 2018.